greetings and shalom to everybody who gets this video, watches it, and is a doer of the word of Elohim. It is Brother Nicholas James Vanderlane here. Victory for the people of Israel from by the narrow path, which is the Ten Commandments. It is the 26th day of the third month on Elohim's Zadok Priest, Dead Sea Scroll, Enoch Solar Calendar, which means that today is the 40th, is the anniversary day of the 40th day of the flood and uh, rain judgment on the world of Noah. It is June 14th, 2019. This video is being broadcasted from the Famagusta region of Cyprus, also I believe to be the area of the daughter of Tyre. This video is titled, Christians and World are Violating the Covenant of Father Noah. This is about the legal basis for the pending world judgment, the sin of eating blood or eating with the blood. And it's not what you think it is. So this is a video that I did about three months ago. It's underperforming. It only has 1,800 views. And everybody wants the rapture, but no, very few people want holiness. Christians set, slash Netzarim were instructed twice in Acts chapter 15 regarding the Council of Jerusalem to not eat blood. Yet they are ignorantly doing so to this day. This video you are watching is to restore the biblical understanding to all the Christians out there, to the Netzarim, to real Israel, the real Israelites, and to the world. This video was already to the inhabitants of the wastelands, those that say they are Jews in the land of Israel that are violating this. It is part of the Ezekiel 33 Watchmen's message. So on March 14th, I published this video. As I was given the wisdom and understanding by the Spirit of Truth to reconstitute the understanding of the sin of eating flesh, quote, with the blood, unquote. It is a grave sin, and the world is in violation, as I said, of the covenant that our father Noah made with Yahweh Elohim. This covenant was made just after the flood judgment, and I presume this, is the, this violation is the legal basis for the coming fire judgment to the world. As a descendant of Noah, you are born into this covenant that Father Noah and his three sons made with Yahweh Elohim. This video is made to explain to you the covenant that you are, have been born into and to notify you that you're in direct violation of it. If you click off of this video, you are still accountable to this and even more so because you got the warning. Too much is given, much is required. I recommend, upon hearing this video, to be a Berean, search out this matter, receive this information, fear Yahweh Elohim, and make teshuva. What is teshuva? It means doing the opposite, receiving and going. It's part of our sanctification process, brothers and sisters in Messiah Husha. So in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it talks about the evil in the last days. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, taking selfies, everybody, Covetous, we see that in America, complete greed, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, breaking the Ten Commandments, covetous is breaking the Ten Commandments, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, this is homosexual sin. And the next one is truce breakers. There has been a truce that was made between Father Noah and his three sons with Yahweh Elohim. They made a truce. It was the covenant that was given on the 15th day of the third month, which is Shavuot, and the whole world, all the meat eaters, flesh eaters, are in violation of this. And we are, I'm making this video to educate you on this matter that you might fear Yahweh Elohim and be a doer of the covenant that you are born into. In Genesis chapter 9, between Noah and his sons and Yahweh Elohim, when they were instructed, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require it. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of a man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. You can pause it and read it. Elohim spake unto Noah and to his son, saying, And I behold, I establish my covenant with you and your seed after you. And then you can keep reading. And Elohim said, This is the token of the covenant, which is a rainbow which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations, forever. I do set my bow in the cloud, okay, the rainbow, and it shall be a token for the covenant between me and the whole earth. What is a, the covenant? This is the truce 
This is why they're called truce breakers in the last time, because we're all violating, we have all violated this covenant between Yahweh Elohim and Noah made. Okay, you can read this chapter for yourselves. But this is the truce that happened. Yahweh Elohim flooded the earth, and Noah made truce by making a covenant and saying, we will not eat the blood. Here in Jubilees chapter 6, this, this covenant was made on the 15th day of the third month, which is Shavuot, which happened 11 days ago. And you can read here, and Noah and his sons swore that they would not eat any blood that was in, the word in, any flesh. And he made a covenant before Yahweh Elohim for their, forever, forever, throughout all generations of the earth. And you can go ahead and read Jubilees chapter 6 for yourself. A lot of people think, oh, if I slaughter the animal, drain out the blood, that's good enough. Well, actually, that's not what this is talking about. It is the life that is in the flesh. The blood, it says that you will eat the flesh with the blood. So there is a, a blood-type substance that's still in it. And again, the rainbow sign of the covenant was given. And there are seven colors to the true rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. That means seven. While the LBGT rainbow flag has only six, it is a counterfeit. They are mocking this covenant. Why? Because they are without natural affection, and we are all truce breakers. The second offense after natural affection is truce breakers, and then false accusers. And you can be falsely accused so much on YouTube for loving the truth, and I don't hold it against any of you. Also interesting to note, Again, that this is during the Gay Pride Month, is during this month that we're in right now. It typically runs through June, and Shavuot will always, on Yahweh Elohim's only calendar, Shavuot will always happen during June, plus the fourth day, uh, the first day of the fourth month, which is also a festival of Day of Remembrance of Father Noah. And this is clearly mocking Yahweh Elohim, and Yahweh Elohim is not mocked. So how was I led into the understanding of, of, of this, of eating with the blood? Well, I was looking into it, and I saw uh, Straightway Help Meets Pastor Dowell and his congregation, and this is how the women there remove the blood out of their meat. This is great effort, but I can guarantee you from the scriptures that this is 100% incorrect. Uh, they soak the, meat, the flesh in water overnight, and that does not remove what is the 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 blood that is in the meat. As I was researching this, this video popped up. This is by a, a professional bass fisherman, David Dudley. His channel is an outdoors channel, so it's a secular channel. It has nothing to do with biblical understanding. He's explaining how to remove the gaminess flavor out of deer meat and how to do that. And I said, that's interesting. Let me take a look at this, how he redoes this. And what he did is he took the flesh of the deer and he put it in a pot of water and put it in the oven, or you can do it on a fire on very low heat. And he seethed the flesh, and all of the gunk came out, the, the myoglobin came out. And when I saw this video, bingo, the spirit of truth reminded me of flesh pots. And then I did an intense study and found out the only biblical method of cooking flesh is to boil slash seethe the flesh. In water. So the only exception to eating unseethed flesh is the Passover, which the flesh is roasted and you're instructed to eat it roasted. The Torah instructs us to not eat blood. Genesis 9 4, but flesh with the soul life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Deuteronomy 12 23, only be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life. Thou mayest not eat the soul life with the flesh. Leviticus 3.17, it shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings, that ye eat neither fat nor blood. Leviticus 7.27, whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, any manner, okay, any type of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. So there's going to be two types of blood. The blood that flows through your veins, and then that clear liquidish thing, stuff that you see inside of the meat packaging. We're going to talk about that. It's the same juices that cook out of a steak. Leviticus 17, 10 through 11, Whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, stranger or soldier among them, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among the, his people. For the soul life of the flesh is in the blood. And you can talk, read about it. Here in the Jubilees it talks about that again. It's almost verbatim. But the flesh with the life thereof, with the blood, you shall not eat. 
Okay, we saw that. It's almost verbatim there. There's other here. And then here, for all Christians out there, Peter, apostles, and elders with Paul and Barnabas instructs us not to eat the blood at the Council of Jerusalem, Acts 15, 20 to 21, and then Acts 15, 28 to 29, that they are supposed to abstain from blood. So there are four different kinds of flesh. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39. All flesh is not the same, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of another of fishes, and another of birds. Leviticus 7, verse 26. Moreover, you shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast in any of your dwellings. The, 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 the blood of fish is left out. Now, fish, ha fish has to be cooked, okay? I believe that when the Israelites got all of that, it says quail, but I believe it's mistranslated. It should be fish, and they got piles of fish. Yahweh had like a big cyclone and brought it out and dumped fish on them, I believe, and they ate it raw. So sushi is a no-no, okay? Messiah Husha prepared roasted fish for his disciples on the seashore of Galilee for his disciples. And then we also know that that boy, I think, what did he have? Two fish and five loaves. Yahusha fed 5,000 with it. It doesn't give us the detail of the cooking method. It could have been preserved in salt, or which is dried or sun-dried, or it could have been roasted. We do not understand uh, the cooking method of the fish that was left out. What is flesh with the blood? The meat juice that comes from meat is not red blood cell. This is predominantly what's called myoglobin, which is suspended in water with a trace amount of red blood cells. Myoglobin is what gives flesh its level of red color. You can see it right here in the meat packaging. This meat juice is what people call it. This is a Wikipedia page on myoglobin, and you can see the difference of myoglobin from hemoglobin, and you can go ahead and read it. But down there by the red arrow, the difference is, that, okay, like hemoglobin, myoglobin is a cytoplasmic protein. So it is a protein that binds oxygen on a heme group, okay? And the difference that's related in the role is as hemoglobin, which is in the blood with your red blood cells, it transports oxygen to the muscles. Myoglobin's function is to store the oxygen in your muscles. So anytime you talk or anytime you move, anytime you do that, it allows the muscles to create a chemical reaction right away, which is create the energy. Plus the hemoglobin, that's part, that's the blood protein, the myoglobin are all part of the oxygen slash CO2 delivery system of your body. Here you have what is a myoglobin, and we just read about a heme. And here's hemoglobin, and as you can see, myoglobin only has one heme, while hemoglobin has four hemes, okay? And this is what's in your blood, and this circulates with the oxygen and brings the oxygen to the myoglobin, and the myoglobin stores the oxygen in the heme, and then it uses it to make that chemical reaction. And when the muscle has used it, it takes the carbon dioxide, the CO2, and then it brings it from the myoglobin back into the hemoglobin, and it brings it and you exhale out the CO2. This is a study that talks about cancer-causing molecules by this senior lecturer in pharmaceutical chemistry at the University of Sydney. They are saying that just traces amounts of myoglobin attribute to cancer, okay? So with all the other things that we're exposed to, all these other chemicals, that are unnatural, all these plastics and all of these petrochemicals. Along with this, this is probably do, helping increase the rate of cancer. The sin of eating with the blood is found in the scriptures. This is unsodden flesh. We see Eli. Eli was a righteous priest, right? And he had two sons, and his sons were sons of worthlessness. And you could read about this, sons of Belial. They knew not Yahweh. And as the priest customs, with the people was that they any man offered sacrifices, the priest servant came, and while the flesh was in seething, that means it was in a pot of boiling water, the flesh was taken with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, so he stuck it in and drew out and he struck it into the pan or the kettle or cauldron or pot, and all the flesh on the hook brought up, the priest took for himself, and that's how the priests got their food. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also before they burnt the fat, so they burnt the fat, the fat pieces that are around like uh, the prime rib, all the fat, fatty layer there. Also before they burnt the fat, the priest servants came, and they said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to, to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh from thee, but raw. So 
His Eli's sons, his wicked sons, wanted to eat raw flesh. Why? Because they wanted to roast it. They wanted a medium rare steak. Okay, and if any man said unto them, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, then he would answer, Nay, but thou shalt give it to me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before Yahweh, for men abhorred the offering of Yahweh. As I edit this video, it looks like they wanted to take it by force, so they probably had some sort of blood addiction to this flavor, this taste of eating blood. So they wanted to eat the flesh with the blood. King Saul did something similar, okay, as we see here, is that this is the, the, first, the last account before Yah he, he defied Yahweh Elohim. He tried to fake it. He slew the animal on the ground, and the people did eat them with the blood. So he, he, he put the animal on the ground and cut it, down, cut it there and bled it out on the ground, but there was still blood in it. He put it, got a big stone to make it seem like he was appeasing Yahweh Elohim, and he cut it on the big, he cut, killed the next animal on the stone basically to appease it. But it was all being done as a facade. The real way to prepare your meat is to sodden it. This is why Jerusalem is going to be destroyed because they eat with the blood. Who eats with the blood? The people that claim to be Jews, many of them, and the majority of them, are converts. Their ancestors have converted to religion of Judaism, and now they lost that understanding of who they really are and they eat with the blood you can watch my message where danny dannon literally fulfills the prophecy of, of of that saying um right here saying that abraham was one and he had inherited the land but we are many and the land is given to us for inheritance wherefore say unto them thus say adonai yahweh ye eat with the blood and lift up your eyes toward your idols the, the rabbis and shed blood which they do and shall ye possess the land so you stand upon your sword, and you work abomination. Everyone defiles his neighbor wife. How you can do that by just thinking thought, lustful thoughts. Shall you possess the land? Say unto them, Thus say Yahweh, Adonai Yahweh, as I live, surely they that are in the waste lands of Israel shall fall by the sword. And it's going to be coming. You can watch my message on that. So here is the flesh pots in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 3. This is after they had just come out of the Exodus. And the children of Israel said unto them, would to Elohim we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. So what happened was they were already using flesh pots in Egypt before they came out. This was very customary in the ancient, ancient world just after the flood. They all knew the covenant that Noah and his sons made and they were keeping this covenant in Egypt of not eating with the blood. And they had flesh pots then. Also, we see here in 2 Chronicles 35, 13, and they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance, but the other holy offerings sawed, they boiled, they in flesh pots and in cauldrons and in pans, and they divided them speedily among all the people. And then here is a future prophecy in Zechariah chapter 14 that's in the future. In that day shall there be bells of the horses, holiness unto Yahweh, and the pots in Yahweh's house in the temple shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto Yahweh of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them seed flesh. Okay, this is seed. And seed therein. See, they're going to boil the flesh therein. And in that day there shall be no more Canaanite. That's those who claim to be Levite priests now. I did a video exposing this, the high priest of Israel, using pallets, burning pallets on their altar. What a joke. In the house of Yahweh of hosts. So the correct biblical example of using the flesh pot is found in Ezekiel 24. You can read about it here. And it talks about the scum that happens after you boil that out. And that's what's going to happen to Jerusalem. And then here you can read about the pouring out of blood of the blood water on the ground within thy gates at your house. Deuteronomy 15, 22 and 12, 15 through 16. It's almost the same thing, but this is a little bit more clear. Thou shalt eat it within thy gates, the unclean and clean person alike as the roebuck and the heart, so clean animals, only thou shalt not eat the blood thereof, thou shalt pour it out upon the ground as water. So that you didn't have to go all the way to the temple to eat your sacrifice of the animals. You, could, you were permitted, according to the law, 
to eat it in your own dwelling places within your gates. If you were ceremonial clean or if you were ceremonial unclean, you could eat the meal at your own house. That's what this clean and unclean may eat thereof. Okay, but you're only supposed to eat clean flesh because it's the only flesh that is fit for human consumption. Here we see the pouring out of the blood on the base of the altar. Uh, Deuteronomy 12, 27, Thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, the flesh and the blood, upon the altar of Yahweh thy Elohim, and the blood of thy sacrifices shall be poured out upon the altar of Yahweh thy Elohim. And then here, uh, you can read about the same thing. Pour, and then pouring out the blood water is to be done at your house. You shall pour it out upon the earth as water. So when you cook the flesh, thou shalt pour it out right here upon the ground as water. Pour out the blood water on the ground. If you're inside the city, you pour it in the drain, and it'll go out in the, the sewer system, I guess. Or maybe you're supposed to pour it on the ground and find some area of dirt to pour it on. I don't know. Examples of soddening and boiling of the flesh. Like I said, the only biblical example is to eat sodden or boiled flesh. And it's all throughout here. Here, 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 here. And we see it in the future in the Millennial Temple. Here in the Levitical Law, we have the instructions of the sin offering and the instructions for the guilt offering. Both of these offerings will be performed in the Millennial Reign. And uh, you could read about it here, about if it's an earthen vessel, where the flesh is sodden in, you're supposed to break it. You can't reuse a clay pot if you cook it in the clay, flesh in a clay pot. But if it's a brazen pot, pot or like a cast iron pot with ceramic inside of it, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to both scored and rinsed in water. Now in Ezekiel 24, we see that they turned the heat on, burned out the scum, and then they rinsed it out with the water. And the same, the same instruction, likewise, uh, this law is of the trespass offering. So the sin offering and the trespass offering are the same, okay? And then the consumption of fat is also uh, forbidden, okay? Now, what fat are we talking about? Well, probably the, the fatty portions of like a ribeye steak, right? You got that big fatty lobe on the ribeye steaks. So I imagine that is the fat that is forbidden. And then other parts of fatty areas as well. So the Passover is a unique sacrifice. It is the only time that you're instructed to eat, it's permissible, and instructed to eat roasted flesh. You eat the flesh with the blood. The blood, the myoglobin blood, was what we're talking about here. The myoglobin is what gives the flesh the taste of that flesh. It's that what draws you to want to eat that flesh almost all the time. That means that the Passover sacrifice is the tastiest meal of the year and a festival for every single person inside the covenant to look forward to every year. And Exodus chapter 12, verses 8 through 9, And thou shalt eat the flesh of the Passover in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread with bitter herbs, and they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden, nor boiled at all with water, but roast with fire, his head, with his legs, and with the putinates thereof. And here you can see the Samaritan priests here that are eating the Passover. They have their Passover going right here, and it's one piece. The bones aren't broken, and I believe the head is on, and all the entrails are all inside. Cooked flesh, other than seething it, is all prohibited flesh to, of beasts to eat. The Jewish rabbis have it wrong. Christians in the whole world has it wrong. We're violating this covenant. That means burgers, steaks, kebabs. Ground, ground meats, um, rotisserie meats, sausage, hot dogs, lunch meats, preserved meats such as jerky and dried meats, brined meat such as corned beef, even though it's soddened in the water, I suspect that the brining of the, of the, of the flesh with salt and sugar locks in the myoglobe. It's very similar probably to seething a kid, a baby goat, in his mother's milk. Okay, maybe you want to drink that myoglobin milk after you do it possibly might be irresistible or it might not pull the, the the milk might not allow the myoglobin to be cooked out since we're on the topic clean and unclean foods the tunic family is unclean fish the jewish rabbis have this wrong as well that means mackerel is unclean tuna is unclean and all those other ones in it tuna fish has smooth slippery slimy skin all the better for sliding fast through the water and to the touch you would think that it has no scales but they do have scales and they are very small, but they're not on the surface, but under the skin. 
the tuna is a member of the mackerel clan, cousin to the broad-billed swordfish, the spearfish, and the marlin. And as fish go, this is not a, a very scary family. Some members have no scales at all. Other scales are too small to be noticed. The tuna family has high levels of mercury that absorb through the skin, which makes the flesh toxic for you to eat and consume. All the mercury that's in it, it's unclean. So I recommend everybody, again, watch this video. If you want to find a good recipe in this video, David Dudley, he removes the myoglobin from the deer meat, and then he makes a stew out of it, which is a great thing to do. And then also in this video, I have a little demonstration. I take the ground meatballs, uh, and then I, I remove the myoglobin, and then I took my meatballs and I put it in a vegetable broth, and I made like an Italian wedding soup with, with the meatballs that I made. I don't show that I made the Italian wedding soup, but that's how those ended up. But I show you all the blood water that just pours out and how to do it. Same method as David Dudley here. And again, I want to show you guys 1.8 thousand views in three months. This is a call to holiness. This is a call to remember the covenant of your father, Noah, and to be a doer of the word of Elohim. That means to fear him. Fear Yahweh Elohim because you are in violation of the covenant and to do the covenant, okay, and to be a doer of the word. So, brothers and sisters, I hope that is a great explanation. I'm going to put a link to this whole study. You can read the scriptures and search the matter out for yourself. But this is a complete study, and Yahweh Elohim, he has the legal basis to judge the world with fire, which we know that's prophesied it's going to happen. So please be blessed that you you got this understanding and go out and keep this. Okay, it will be a blessing for you and your house to keep this and to be a doer of the word. And this is for the entire world, not just for the Israelite, not just for the sojourner dwelling among, but this covenant is for the entire world and it's been violated. So this has been restored and this is a warning to all of the world and shalom to you who does this, and shalom to you who have the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach and are in the new covenant, another covenant that Yahushua made of his own blood that was poured out for the remission of sins. Hallelujah. If you're doing this out of ignorance, it's covered by the blood of Yahushua. But 